Hello, in this video I'm going to show you how you can apply transparency to images using paint.net. I'm going to start off with showing you how to remove a background from an image. Uh, for example, a logo, a logo where you might want to show that logo on different coloured backgrounds. This isn't really transparency, it's, it's just removing the background, but it, it makes that background space transparent when you are applying it to other images. So for example, if you want to put your logo on a website or in this demonstration, I'll show you how to use it with a PowerPoint um, slide. So let's start off by picking a typical kind of image that we might want to do this with. And I've got a, a TP link image here, which is their logo. And as you can see that the background is white. So um, if I just took that and put it into a PowerPoint presentation, let's just create a new PowerPoint presentation here. Um, and we'll pick a blank one for the moment and then we'll, um, we'll apply a design to it. And I think I'll pick this one here. So if I simply pull that logo onto the PowerPoint space, like that there you can see that um, I think if I got a bigger one, nope, that's fine. I'll just make it a little bit bigger, I think. So you can see that um, the white background remains. It doesn't matter where I move it. Um, it's that uh, logo on top of white, on top of the green, it's still white. On top of that kind of grayish, brownish color, it's still white. So I'll leave that there for now and we'll, um, we'll just work on this, this image here. So what I want to do is remove all of this white here and I can do that uh, by using the magic wand here to select that white area. And if I click it there, you'll see that I've got a couple of things that I can change here. I've got the selection mode, but I'm not too worried about that. We've talked about selection mode in an earlier video and you can change that as you like. Uh, but we've got flood mode and um, we've got contiguous mode there and we've also got this tolerance here so at the moment the tolerance is 50% um, and I'm in flood mode so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click the magic wand over the white space and you can see that it's it's selected all the white spaces here now if I come back and I just click contiguous and I click again, you'll see it selected the white space, but it's left this white space here and this white space here um, because it's it's not all contiguous. There is there is a break in the white space, and this is only selected the contiguous. Whereas if I go back again to global and click, it it clicks all the white spaces because it's looking for all the same colour in the image. Now I'm just going to get rid of that, and I'm going to go back to contiguous mode. I'm going to change the tolerance to 82%, uh, which is fairly random. And then I'm going to click the magic wand again. And you can see that it's 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 not really selected anything. It's selected the whole image, so it's not really going to work out. If I made that, say, 62% and click again, you can see that it's, it's clicked. It's selected all the white there. It's left that white there, but it's selected probably too much white here. And again, if I go down to a low figure, say 10%, I'll just escape out of that and then click the magic wand, it it kind of gets a little bit messy. So I often find that 50% is about right. So if I escape out of that and, and go back to 50%, and you can adjust it a little bit, maybe, um, if you need to. But I finding for this for the purpose of this demonstration I think 50% is going to be fine so I click that amount and I'm just clicking uh, contiguous because I actually want to leave those white bits there I think they're part of the the logo myself um, I'm going to hold down the control key and I'm going to click in this white space here in, in the middle of this P so that selected that as well and then I'm just going to use the rub out tool which is on, on quite a high size at the moment so it's 300 pixels wide and I'm just going to left click and drag it across and there we go so let's just go back to selection now um, I'll just click in the grey bluey area here um, and as you can see that looks that looks pretty good really I think 
the only thing perhaps is it's um it's got rid of that it, little bit of white space there because there was a break in it there but I'm going to leave that for the for this demonstration you could probably fill it back in again so um, that's ready to use um, and I'm going to save it as a, a PNG because that will keep the transparency that the lack of the background here if I save it as a JPG then it will just fill that in as a white space um, I could also save it as a GIF, but I think PNG is a better, a better format these days. So I'll save it in both, just show you. So I'll save as, and I'll put copy at the end. And I'll save it again, but this time I'll save it as a PNG. And then if we go to the folder here, you can see that's the one that I saved as a PNG and that's the one I saved as a JPG. If I open that one up, the white backgrounds come back. And if I open up the PNG one, there's no white background. So if I go back to the PowerPoint and um, drag the PNG version on there. I'll make it a little bit bigger as well. You can see that the background is gone. It doesn't matter where I put it. The background is effectively transparent, mostly because it isn't there. So that's how to rub out the background. Uh, just keep your logo, uh, make it suitable for different background colors or background textures. I hope that was useful in the next section. Um, I will show you how to apply a gradient transparency um, to, to an image so that you can superimpose one image on, onto another. Hello, in this video I want to show you how to apply gradient transparency to an image using paint.net. And to make this demonstration easier to understand what's going on, I'm going to load in two images. So let's load in the first image, and I'm going to use this bird image here. I load it in. As you can see, it's come in now to paint.net, and it's it's a single layer. I've got in this layers dialog box here, it's one layer. I'm going to select it as a second layer, so there'd be two images in this picture, uh, another image, which I'll, I'll pick this one here. So I've got the set goals image and I've dragged that in. It's gonna ask me, there, there it is, whether I wanna open it as a, as a separate image or add a layer. I'm gonna add a layer. So there you are, I've got two layers now and I can untick either. Um, so I can work on either one as I wish. So let's, to make it a little easier, I'm going to drag this into the middle. So I'll click the Move tool, which has automatically selected that image, and move it into the middle. And if I tick back the background, now you can see it. Now you can see that the Set Goals image is completely covering its area of this picture, so you can't see the birds behind it. Um, if I, if I unclick that set goals ones you can see there's a few birds behind it we can't see those we can't see the blue if I click it back on there you are so what we can use is the gradient tool here to make this this layer here transparent and at the moment that's the this layer is on top and it is the it's at the top of the layers and it is the one that we're actually working on at the moment um, I can use a gradient to make this section transparent. Unfortunately, what I can't do is I can't set the, the level of transparency itself. There's two options up here. Um, there's one here that's got a choice of color mode or transparency mode, and we're interested in transparency mode. I'll quickly show you the color mode. I'll click on the color. At the moment, we've got this yellow color selected here. I'm just gonna drop the bird background off a minute. Um, 
and I'm going to drag the cursor across here and you can see it's applying a color gradient. It's darker in one place at the other and um, if I control Z I can pick a different gradient tool. So I'm in that one at the moment, I could pick that one and then drag it across and it will apply it differently and depending where I move the cursor if I started in the middle it would be different I could draw it out so you've got different options there but it's applied color to it and actually what I want to do is make the image transparent so let's come out of there okay another effect I want to show you um, involves this option up here between normal blending and overwrite in normal blending mode and I'll just control it to get that back. Um, if I click the four, the, the the set goals image here and put a gradient across, it reveals the get the set goals with a gradient applied to it. If I control Z and then click the background and do the same thing, it will reveal the background as a transparency. Probably not a great deal of use in this context, but just to show you how, how that works. Now if I control Z and then use the overwrite option with the set goals image selected and then pull it across, it applies a gradient to the whole image using both layers, as you can see that there. If I control Z, and then select the background then it'll have a slightly different behavior it will uh, apply the gradient to the background but not the the set goals image so different slightly different behaviors depending on which mode you use here and which image is selected at the time so again I'll pull it across I've actually got rid of the background let's go control Z there we go if I pull it across there it reveals that set goals but applies the transparency to both images. So that just leaves the final stage of saving the file and viewing the finished product. I'm going to save it as a .png file, so let's go up to here and save as. And I'll select the PNG option here. And note that I've got dash copy on the end just to, to change the name from the original so I don't ever write anything. Uh, I'll click save, I'll pick the, um, the quality that it's picked by default, click OK and it's going to flatten it and what this means is it's going to merge these two layers into one. So you can see that's done that there and it saved the image so let's go and have a look at the image and there it is there and there it is with all the transparency. Now if I wanted to continue working on that, I could do a control Z. What I might actually do if I want to come back and work on it later, save it as a, a .pdm file, which is which is paint.net's project file and will save all the information about the image so I can come back and work on it another time.